Hey, welcome! In this video we will learn how to reshape pandas data frames in eight different ways. So here's the data frame I'm going to use to show you some of the examples, but for some of them also I might need to use dummy examples just to explain it a little bit better and more clear, clearly. Um, so this data set is a data set I got from New York City uh, Open Data. It is a data set of all open positions in New York City government. We have the job ID, civil service title, so basically the job title, the agency that has opened this position, whether it's an external or internal position, job category, and the expected range, uh, the salary range, so from uh, the lower limit to the upper limit. The first way is to use Pivot. And to explain pivot a little bit better, I will actually use a image. This is an image I got from the official pandas um, documentation. So all credits to them. Uh, basically, as you can see here, when we do pivot, what happens is, let's say we have all of these columns and we have an index. When we do pivot, we can choose uh, one column to serve as the column uh, values one column to serve as the index values and one column to serve as the actual values of the data frame. So here, for example, you get uh, the foo column to be the index. So the index will only be one or two or however many, however many options there are. And then you choose the bar column to be the column name. So then you see how many options there are. There are A, B, and C. So then you have three columns, A, B, and C. And you choose the bus column to be the value. So then you see one and A correspond to one and then you put fill in the values uh, accordingly. But just to show you how to do it also in code here really quickly. So if I have this data frame and if I basically do more or less the same thing as in the example above, then we will have a whole new data frame. Uh, we will have constructed a whole new data frame. As you can see, we don't have all of the information from the previous data frame because we choose one index, one column, and one uh, set of values. Alternatively, I could have used a pivot table. As you can see, we will basically achieve the same thing with that. So I'll just even copy and paste the same values. And it gives me the same result. The reason that you might want to opt for using pivot tables is two things. So first of all, with pivot tables, you can choose to have more than one index or more than one col column. So instead of saying index should be foo, I can say index should be foo and bar and column should be zoo. Let's say that's the, the fourth column that I have here. And it is able to handle the situation. Another reason that you might want to use a pivot table instead of pivot is that it can handle duplicate values too. So I will show you on the example data set that we have. So this one is called data, right? So if I say data pivot, I want the values to be salary range from and index to be job ID and column to be agency. So for each job ID, um, I want to see the lower limit of salary based on the agency, right? Uh, if I try to do this with pivot, it's going to give me an error because it cannot handle duplicate entries. And here in my data set, I have duplicate job IDs. Some job IDs are mentioned more than once, maybe because they have different agencies that they refer to or different types of posting type. Uh, but instead I can use pivot table and I will be able to do this. Then I get this uh, information. As you can see, I do not have as many rows as there are rows in my data data frame. So we can see how many rows that one has. That one has 3,773 rows. Here we only have 2,073 because uh, my index is job ID, right? So you would expect there to be as many rows as job IDs and some of them are duplicates. So pivot table combines these duplicates together to come up with one value. And while doing that, what it does is to aggregate these values. By default, it uses the NumPy mean function, but you can specify it to use something else. Next, I want to show you the stack function. So let's say, you have a uh, data frame again, it has multiple index, doesn't really matter, it could also have one index, and you have uh, A and B columns. If you say stack, it turns these columns into, uh, turns these column names into one column. So here, instead of saying uh, this row corresponds to bar one and the corresponding um, column where it is A, then the value is one. Instead of this, it will create a redundant information and put all of it in another 
uh, index basically. So let's do this also. I'll just use the example again from the pandas documentation. Here is an example of a data frame where we have the A and B columns and I want to use stack, stack on this. So it's, this is a little bit hard to understand. So I'll make, turn this into a proper data frame. So, okay, yeah, as we've seen also in the example above in the visualization, we are able to put that column, uh, the column names into a whole new column of themselves. Uh, so right now, effectively, we have three indices, right? Um, what else I can do with this, if I call this uh, stacked data frame, I can unstack it. So basically I can do, basically we uh, undo what we, what we just did. So this is still the stacked ID, the stacked uh, data frame. Instead of just undoing what I just did, I can also specify which of these indices I want to unstack. So I can say zero, for example, and then it would unstack the first uh, column or the first index here or I can even call them by name. So let's say I want to unstack the second one, then I can specify that in the second now becomes a uh, column information, the name of the columns, the values for the second index becomes the name of the columns. Another thing you can use in pandas is called the melt function. So to do that, I call it with pandas and then I pass my data set to it. I specify which column it should use for IDs. Let's say I want to use job ID right now and then the value information, where should the values come from? Let's say agency and uh, posting type, okay. So basically what this does is it chooses one of the, or I choose one of the columns as the index again, and for the value variables, the var value columns, it looks at all of them and then gives me that information in a very redundant and exploded way. So let me show you the result. So basically for each job ID, uh, this could, obviously there are a lot of um, duplicates here, right? Uh, each piece of information is given to me in a different row. Basically, that's a better way of saying it. So I have for this job ID, I have the agency information. I also have the posting type information. It gives the, all of those informations to me on a, a separate line. So uh, I have this job ID, the agency of it is this. So maybe I can uh, separate one job ID and see what it looks like. So if I call this the melted data frame and in here, I will see the information for this job ID. And here it tells me for this job ID, the agency information is this and the posting type information is internal. Next, we can use group by. It is a big function and sometimes it could be a little bit confusing to first starters. So I will make a whole separate video for a group by, for the group by function, the best places to use it and the best practices uh, to follow when you're using it. But just to show you here more or less how you can use it. Um, so let's say I want to get the um, average minimum, where is my data set? Yeah, average minimum salary for all positions uh, in each agency, right? So for that, I would need to group by agency and I would use the uh, mean aggregate function on the salary range from column. So let's do that. Which one I wanted to do? Uh, agency, right? I said agency. All right, so I will say data group by agency and I want the mean. It will give me the mean of job ID, salary range from and salary range too, but I don't really want the job ID one. So again, what we can do like we did before is to uh, get a subset of the data frame. So what I want is only the agency and salary range from. And then it gives me for each agency, what is the mean salary range from. And yeah, this is one way to reshape your data set. It's also part of analyzing your data set too. But um, we will, as I said, talk more about group by in a different video. This next one is called cross tab. As you can understand from the information, you basically create a cross tab table uh, of information and how many times they occur together. So for that, I will call pandas cross tab. And then I can choose two of the columns. Let's say I want to see um, agency and posting, posting type probably. Okay, let's, let's see. I need to pass data, agency, and data 
posting type. Let's see what it gives me. Yeah, so basically this is a cross table of how many times in the agency of admin for children's SVCS, I don't really know what that means, but okay. Uh, did we see external positions open? How many times we see internal positions open? For Board of Corrections, how many times we've seen external positions open? How many times we've seen internal positions open? Well, this is a really nice way of manipulating your data. Uh, sometimes you just need to add this information to your data also, just to kind of create a different uh, perspective uh, to your whole data frame. And that brings us to the last function which is explode. So I will again create a dummy data frame for that. Uh, what explode does is literally explode one of your columns uh, and make the information that is in there a one column, a one row at a time. So especially it works with lists. So let's say I have this data frame, keys data frames, panda one, panda two, panda three, but the values data frame involves, it includes a list. And as you might, seen before, experienced before, working with lists inside data frames is not that easy. So for that, what you can do is to say data frame explode oops, values. And then it will return a data frame to you where all of this information, the list information has been exploded, not in uh, columns, but in rows. And you have one row for all of the values inside these lists. Alternatively, what you can do is to call the explode function on the column itself. So I'll say data frame values explode, but then that would just return to you a uh, list, I think, or maybe a series object. Let's see what it is. Yeah, it's a series object. So you can do with that series object, whatever you want, but if in turn you just want a whole already structured data frame, you can use to call the function on the data frame immediately. But that's all today about reshaping Pandas data frames. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave a comment below this video. Again, you can find the code and all the information that you need about this tutorial in the description below. If you want to learn more about Pandas function, also other Pandas functions, how they work and what are the best times to use them, I've made a free Pandas cheat sheet and you can find the link to that also in the description below. So I hope it was all clear. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video.